Hello food lovers, this is Tony. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm doing a review of a recent dinner I had at Nobu restaurant in Las Vegas. Now there are three different Nobu restaurants in Las Vegas and we went to the one in the Virgin Hotel which is located at 4455 Paradise Road in Las Vegas, a little bit off the strip. There are two other uh, Nobus, one in, I think, Caesar's Palace and one in the Paris um, Hotel. But we were told by our server that um, this is the most authentic one because the chefs come from the Nobu chain, whereas the other two restaurants, um, Caesar's Palace, I think, controls them or owns them. And so um, they have a little bit more say in terms of the, the um, uh, chefs there. So we were very excited to come. I, I tried to get into Nobu many times in New York, so I thought this was nice that I could get a reservation here. Um, it looked like a nice place. The hotel is a little bit like off the strip and uh, a little bit more like a mid-level hotel, so we were a little concerned, but we got to the restaurant. Um, seemed like a nice casual place, very good vibe, and it seemed very busy. So how Nobu's menu is set up is they have some classic dishes and then they have some now dishes. And the classic dishes are, I think, kind of classic dishes that they're famous for. And now can be kind of substituted for each individual location. They have a little bit of variation there and kind of newer type things. So we, we actually read an article um, that um, was about 10 dishes that made my career by Nobu Masushiya. And we wanted to try most of them. So the first one, this is his um, hamachi with um, jalapeno, which is hamachi is yellowtail. And this was for $33. It was good, but um, we were kind of reading about it. And what he kind of does is jalapeno, uh, like he kind of got this inspired because one night he had a lot of leftover yellowtail and then he had some jalapeno with the only spice remaining. So he made the best of it. And that's kind of the theme among many of his dishes. They're kind of, he takes, um, odd, it's odds and ends and kind of um, not the best pieces and make something delightful of it, which I guess is kind of very creative, but from a eating perspective, what kind of, I just want to eat the best stuff. Maybe I don't want to eat the, you know, I'd rather just eat really great parts of or cuts of the meat or really great fish rather than have someone kind of use a worse part of the fish or worse cut and then try to make something great of it. That's just my personal preference. Next dish was his new style sashimi, and this was for uh, $32. And again, it's um, the history of this is that he, when he first served sushi in LA 30 years ago, a lot of people didn't like raw fish. They like cooked fish, so he wanted to salvage the dish, and he kind of used some hot oil and poured it over the fish to make it not as, um, I guess, uh, raw. So actually, it's a neat concept, and really when you, taste this it doesn't really seem like raw salmon so i guess if that's the aim of it um that's great but actually i'd rather just i don't mind raw salmon and in bc we actually eat a lot of um traditional China, japanese food like raw food it's no big issue with us so i'm not sure you really want to hide it but again it's a really neat take on it it's really creative but again, going back to my concept of, well, why don't I just eat really good sashimi instead of um, pretending it's not sashimi? Next, we had some individual tacos. We tried the Wagyu taco for $16 and the um, lobster taco for $14. And both were really nice. Um, nothing wrong with them. I didn't think they were... The, I had, my wife had the a lobster, which she said was good. I had the Wagyu one, which was okay. I couldn't actually tell it was Wagyu. Um, so it wasn't that tender that I could tell. Again, very cute concept, um, and it just makes things easier. But that was kind of my sense that most of the food was really built for the, um, I guess, American market to try to introduce them to Asian cuisine, particularly Japanese cuisine. But from my perspective, I love Japanese cuisine, so why would I want to hide in it or kind of dumb it down? So. Um, I understand where he's coming from, but from my perspective, it's like, well, why would you want to do that? So anyways, it was kind of interesting and very innovative. Just want to say that our waiter 
uh, Mirai was excellent. Um, he explained everything. He was very calm and patient. He was uh, really good at explaining the dishes to us. I think his family's been involved with Nobu for many years in various capacities. So he was really, really good. So it was nothing to do with him and uh, the service was excellent. Uh, the next dish was off the menu a bit. It was on the list of 10 dishes that made Nobu, um, like his career in this article. And, but it wasn't on the menu, but he made it for us anyways. It's kind of a white fish with dry miso and the white fish they use is fluke. And again, um, it's kind of neat. It, they, I guess just reading about it, he, uh, Nobu was experimenting with um, dehydrating different items um, and different paste and he came up with this um, uh, I guess with dried miso and it's again a really neat dish um, very innovative and very tasty but um, going back to the essence of you know I don't mind sashimi I don't mind raw sashimi so I don't need it to be hidden and so although it was really neat it was kind of in a way westernized from my perspective next was the kapocha or squash tempura and there's two pieces for six dollars which is kind of nice um found it a bit oily um uh again just comparing to the cuisine that i see in vancouver uh, i think i've had better tempura so um you know it's, it was okay but it wasn't uh, the best i've had and not the worst i've had either the next dish is the rock shrimp tempura which is 32 dollars Again, this is a dish that he created um, in response to, because he said most people in the world, uh, they dip fried items in ketchup and mayonnaise. And so he wanted to create something that's a little different. So this is from chili mayonnaise with yuzu juice and shiitake. Um, I think he has to get credit for innovating a lot of this stuff. But what I think has happened is that people have taken his concepts and kind of made them better, or at least better for my taste buds. Um, I found this dish a little bit on the creamy side and a little bit on the sweet side. And that's what I found with most of his dishes. They were um, a little bit on the sweet side for my palate, but I think they're more um, made for a westernized palate. Um, but again, I think a lot of these dishes, he innovated and brought it to the Western market and made Japanese food palatable. Um, but again, from my perspective, I think Japanese food by itself is authentic Chinese food. Japanese food is very palatable for my palate. I don't mind raw food. And so it, um, although it's really innovative and neat, and I understand that he's brought this to the Western market, made it more popular. Um, uh, I actually just prefer authentic Japanese food. This is the dish that I think I enjoyed the most of the night and is the most innovative. I haven't seen this much anywhere else. This is his squid pasta. And again, this is in response to people that were afraid to try squid because it's tough and chewy. So he made it like look like penne pasta and um, it's sauteed and very tender. So it was really tender. Great concept. It does look like pasta. Um, but it's delicious. And so I like this concept in terms of it's just um, very innovative, um, very artistic, and uh, really neat, I think. So I, I really enjoyed this dish. Last dish we had was a black cod miso for $45. I understand that this is really a traditional Japanese dish. It is made in a um, sweeter style, I think, for the Western palate. Again, I've had this at many different Japanese restaurants. Um, I think he's an innovator. But I think, um, at least for my palate, I've had it um, better in a lot of Japanese restaurants here. Not as sweet. So all in all, I hate to do this by not recommending it, but just for my palate, it's um, westernized Japanese food. And I really um, applaud him for uh, bringing this to the market, making it popular, making, um, you know, showing people in the north america how japanese food can taste but from my perspective again if you don't like japanese food why would you why would we have to force you to eat japanese food right um so it's kind of americanized or westernized japanese food which is very innovative and it's a i'm sure he's trying to bring the culture of japan to north america so you've got to applaud him for that um but um from my perspective the a lot of the dishes were um, kind of 
I'm trying to hide certain things that I don't think you need to hide. So I don't think you have to hide the um, rawness of a fish. I don't think you need to hide um, the nature of a fish or the texture of squid. So those are not things that I think you really need to hide. So I just, overall the concept, I don't agree with because I don't think you should hide the best things of Japanese uh, cuisine, but I understand um, and I really respect his artistry. Unfortunately, I could not recommend this restaurant for my palate. Um, but anyways, I'm sure people really enjoy it. And the restaurant, the service was excellent. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this review. Until next time, happy eating.